Hello everyone and welcome to my coloring corner. Today is Fun Stuff Friday and we have a wonderful gift that was sent to me. These are the 40 Luminance uh, Caran d'Ache colored pencils. Uh, they are a 3.8 millimeter core and they are uh, of course light fast rated. They are a uh, certified cedar wood round pencil and um, Let's see, they have, of course, their identification numbers and names on them on the back of the box. You do get a small uh, color swatch chart, which tells you what colors are in the set. And this is really kind of cool. It tells you what year they were brought out. So they started in 1915 with the originals. And then they went to 1927 and brought out the Technograph. And then 1929, a Fix Pencil. And 1931, Prismalo. 1952, they brought out Neocolor. And then 1966, uh, Fibralo. 1974, Neocolor 2. 1985, Neo Pastel. 1988, the Supercolor. In 1990 is the Pablos, and I have those. And then in 2000, they brought out Art by Karen Dash. And then in 2006, they brought out the Graphite line. And then in 2008, they brought out the Luminance. 2012, they brought out the Pastel Pencils. And in 2013, they brought out the Museums. So that's really cool information there. They are a Swiss made pencil. And uh, yeah, they are um, FSC, so that's uh, mixed wood from responsible sources. They are FSC certified as well as light fastness certified. So they have the highest, highest light, light fastness of 85%, and uh, they are ASTM standard light fast, which is great. So let's take a quick look at the pencils and then we'll do a quick swatch. The, the box is fantastic. Let's look at the box for a moment. On the top of the box, it's a really thick cardboard, but it also has glued in a really heavy, dense um, foam, which protects the pencils. And in each tray there's two little trays in this at this set it does come in a 12 uh, 12 24 I think no 12 20 and 40 as well as a 76 set this is the 40 set but each pencil has its own little spot inside of this foam really dense foam um, tray separator and then on the back side of the tray, of this tray, let's see if I can turn this out over without dumping all the pencils out. Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> I'm worried about dumping all the pencils out. But on the back side of this tray, it also has, I don't know if you can see it, it also has a really good thick bit of foam on there as well to protect the pencils below. And then the bottom of the tray is another thick pad of foam holding each of the pencils in place. That's just awesome. That is care and responsibility of packaging. And Karen Dash does it beautifully with every set of pencils they do. I just think it's fantastic. And I'm going to stop fawning over the pencils now. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> They're just so pretty. I love pencils. Um, the colors are absolutely fantastic. I did swatch these, so I am going to switch over to the swatch for just a moment. Uh, it will be very quick. It's only 48 pencil or 40 pencils, so it will go pretty quickly. Um, and then we will take a look at the swatch and um, go over the colors that I do have, and then we'll color with them. So just give me one second while we switch on over to the swatch. It is now swatch time.
That wasn't so bad, was it? Okay, so I did the Karen Dash swatch that you just watched on a tan sheet of paper so that I could see the difference between how it looks on tan and how it looks on white. So I've done it on both. Um, the tan paper worked really well for showing the white, which is awesome. Um, it did change the color, the tone of the color quite a bit, in my opinion. Now I have blended this side, but I haven't blended this side. So let's blend this side a bit. And of course, I'm going to blend it with the Caran Dash Blender. So I'm just going to grab that. And we're going to move the pencils out of the way here for just a moment. And we're going to, um, you know, blend this one. And see how much it intensifies the color in comparison to what it used to be. And see if it changes that dullness that the um, tan paper gave it. I did it on the tan paper because I have been told that the colors are brighter. You can see the colors better on camera um, if you use a tan paper. And for, for some of the colors that's very true. However, some of the colors I find, I'm finding that it changes them a little bit. But once you blend it and cover up that, that uh, paper, it's actually not too bad. It's not as vibrant, I don't think, as it is on white but white causes a glare on the camera so you don't really see the true color through the glare sometimes. Okay, where's my brush? You're brushy, brushy, brushy. <laughs> Let's get rid of some of this dust. Okay, so I think once you blend it, it it actually revives that color, which is cool. I like that. As long as you put down enough layers to cover up that uh, that tan. I think it's pretty much the same. So let's take a look and compare them. I'll just do this blue too so that we can compare the entire thing. Get the purple off there. I think, I think with the, uh, with the tan paper, you're, you're getting pretty much the same coloring. This one here is, this white paper has more tooth than the tan paper. I think I used a higher toothpaper on the white one. But in comparison, um, I think still think these are a little bit brighter, but it could also be the white contrasting the, the camera. So let's take a look at it up close. Let's take a look up close. And then we will uh, 
move on to maybe some coloring. So let's zoom out a little bit here. There we go. So that we can actually see both sets next to each other. Well, I don't think they're too bad. What do you guys? I guess I really can't ask what you guys think. <laughs> I think they're all right. I think they do pretty good on both different colors of paper. I think um, on the tanned cardstock, um, in order to get that vibrancy of color, you definitely do need to blend it. But I think they both did pretty good on both types of paper, which is awesome. All right, so. I'll switch you back over to the main and we're going to switch over to the white because it's a little bit easier to see. Now I did not go through and uh, you know add the color names. This is Emily Illustrator's uh, swatch sheet and she just has the uh, color numbers. So I didn't go through and add the color names. I will um, definitely grab the color name sheet. I have the um, swatch sheet out of my swatch book um, out of the out of this book here the big book of color charts by Ruby Charms um, but I wasn't able to find one color on there I was not able to find this color number on any of these charts this is the only one I was able to find that color on. So I don't know if they changed a color, a couple of colors or what, but the Ruby Charms chart does not have um, a 571 on it. So it might, I just may not be seeing it, but um, yeah, so I, I was at a loss once I hit the 571 pencil and couldn't find it. So I will have to uh, go through and do a little bit more research. If you guys know what 571 used to be, um, let me know uh, and I'll be able to, to swatch it properly because I'm not even seeing the name. Um, it's... Uh, it's got a funny name and I can't read it very well but I did find it on um, other people's actual colored swatch charts so I got as far as that one on the named swatch chart and couldn't find that name or that number so yeah so we're gonna take a look and I'll see if you guys know the color. Uh, I think it's this one. Yes. So it's anthro something or other pink. And I can't read it. <laughs> like I said, I have a hard time reading the wraparound color names, but as long as I have them in order of number, I'm all good. So we've got some uh, our white, of course, we've got a really nice cream color here into our yellows. I am going to have to buy a few colors, so I will do one-offs and fill this whole chart in as I go along. But in this set, we have a white, we have a cream, a uh, light yellow, which is a lemon yellow, a medium yellow, a light orange, a dark orange, a couple of reds into a red um, purple color. What color is that? Magenta kind of color. They call it purplish red. <laughs> so that's purplish red. And then we go into our really dark red and then a purple and then we have some blues 
and then a blue green and then a dark blue and then we go into our greens. It has a really good selection of greens for a small set. It has one really dark green, a medium green, a light green, and an olive green. So that's a really good selection of greens there. And then we go into our, our olive yellow, into our browns, and it has a good selection of browns as well. It has a sand brown and a, a deeper sand brown, and then it's got a couple of reddy browns and a couple of um, umbers, like dark umbers, which is wonderful. And then we go into our purple colors here. I'm not quite sure where they, why they put them there and not over here, but that's, you know, I would have put them over here, but that's all right. It's, it's the way that the numbers are. And uh, then we've got our salmon kind of color here. And this is a nice, um, really light skin tone and then we've got our uh, gray pink here our uh, gray rose color here and then we've got a couple of grays um, a light gray here a warm gray a dark gray and then we've got a couple of different blacks here as well so for a, a 40 count set it has a really good selection of colors um, and I'm happy with that. I'm, I'm really glad that uh, they are in every set putting a, a good selection of each color family in there, which is wonderful. Okay, so we're going to color with these. Where did I put that coloring sheet? And we're going to color on this sheet here. And I think we're going to color, we're going to color this picture. So I'm going to switch you over to the close-up camera and we're going to color this one here. My lighting keeps on changing because of course it decided that it wants to be a sunny day where it was a cloudy day when I adjusted all of my um, camera settings. All right, so let's start with getting out a pencil sharpener now most people use a hand sharpener for these i'm really bad with hand sharpeners so i will give it a try and let's try that first let's take a look at a hand sharpener and see if i can actually sharpen these or if i need to use my um my crank sharpener. I'm just looking for my little bullet. So I was told the best one to use that that is used, well not the best one, but the one that the, that people use for these is the little bullet. And I have a little bullet here, so let's try that out. So I'm going to move the page here for a second. So here's my bullet. Uh, and let's do the cream here and it turns okay it's a little tight but it sharpened pretty good it does feel a little tight in there though almost like it's too big for but it sharpened all right and I didn't break it, so that's good. The lead's still in there, which is good. Awesome. And it didn't take too much of the pencil off, which is even better. So I'm gonna sharpen a couple of these. So yeah, it's not taking a lot of the lead out. is good 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 this is the first pencil I've actually you know been able to sharpen with this uh, pencil sharpener without completely destroying the pencil which is fantastic Very nice. 
Very, very nice. Not too bad. And of course, all of them need to be sharpened, <laughs> but I think we're just going to sharpen the ones that we're going to use. So, one more, and then I'll only sharpen the ones I'm going to use. How's that? All right. Because I don't want to sit here for the entire thing sharpening pencils. <laughs> Although. Yeah, it might it might be entertaining watching me sharpen pencils without breaking them. That might be entertaining. All right, let's color. All right, so we're going to do this one. We're going to do our wonderful little umbrella there. And um, let's start with this yellow. And I'm using number 240, which is lemon yellow. Make it a nice bright umbrella. And it doesn't take any pressure at all to put color down with these. Oh, they ever nice. I'm coloring on a weird angle because I've got so much on my desk right now. I should have cleaned it off, but I've got so much to do. Playing with all sorts of things. So we're just gonna they are really, really nice. Let's try to keep you in screen so you can see what I'm doing. That might be good, huh? Nah, you don't want to see me coloring. All right, so we've got that one done. Now we're going to take the darker yellow. Let's see if I turn that on. Nope. <laughs> nope, we won't do that. Which is golden bismuth yellow. And we're going to give it a bit of a sharpen because it's a little dull. Try not to break the pencil. And then we're just going to come in here into these darker areas. And give the contrast. Definitely going to have to start buying a individuals because these are wonderful. They they seem to blend together really nicely. I'm going to zoom you in a little bit. Nope, that's out. There you go. So you can actually see the colors. Now this is a fairly small picture and these pictures are done by Rita Berman. Normally I would use the um, Joanne Bashford, but I saw these ones and they were so summery. And I thought, ooh, I like those. Those would be great for our summertime pencil look at. They're so pretty. I love these little pictures. They they're quick to do. And some of them are just so cool. Like these ones are just really cool. And I do believe this is a free sheet on Rita Berman's um, website. So it was created on 
the 15th of June 2020. And it's been sitting in my file folder of things to color probably since then. <laughs> All right. I think I like that. I think that's good enough there. And I'm just putting love, really light layers. I'm not putting any pressure on the pencil at all. A, because I don't want to use the pencil up. And B, <laughs> I'm finding that they layer really, really nicely. The more layers you put down, the, the more intense the color is, which is fantastic. I could sit here all day doing this. Uh, next. All right. So now we're going to do the um, wood of the umbrella here, the shaft. So we're going to sharpen up this one. Hopefully. And this one here is uh, brown ochre. I'm just going to bring it down the shaft here. Once again, just really light pressure. Layering it up, filling in all those gaps. All right. And then we're going to take this one, which is uh, raw umber. And we're just going to go down the edges, giving it a bit of a shadow. Don't rub with your hand. Where is my brush? <laughs> uh oh, I've put my brush somewhere and now I don't know where it is. Yeah, um, whatever you do, make sure that you have your brush handy because you will smear it if you rub it with your hand. And I have put my brush somewhere and now I don't know where it is. This is not good. Not good, to, not to good. Where did I put it? I know I just saw it. Did it roll away? Drop on the floor? Where did it go? Oh no! Alright, well I'm going to have to use a different brush. Yeah, I'll just use my big brush. I haven't used this brush in a while, so we'll just use it. <laughs> I don't know where my little brush went. Which is fine. We'll, we'll just move on from here. Um, and now we're going to use... Um, this one, which is that purplish red. No, actually, I'm going to use this one first. I'm going to use mang manganese violet first. I'm going to quickly sharpen it. A nice light color for the flower. Trying to I'm 
once again just barely touching the paper and just building up that color. Now of course you can be heavy handed with these but they layer so nicely. So I'm just going to fill in the light purple here on this flower and then we will go over it with a darker color. We'll use the purplish red and then we'll blend it with this um, lighter color as well. So I'm just putting on a few layers of the light purple and then once I get the darker color on I will go over it again to blend that all together. Oh. Summer is starting. And the kiddo is almost out of school. I think today is his last day of school. So my house is going to become a little bit more hectic. <sighs> with him playing his video games and talking to his friends and being loud and obnoxious. <laughs> Instead of hiding in his room quietly thinking I can't hear him so I think he's doing his schoolwork. When he's, you know, playing video games or having a nap. It's another one of his favorite things. I don't want to do my schoolwork, so I'm going to have a nap. But thankfully it's his last year of school. Now he can get a job or figure out his career choices and go to whatever college that he needs to go to. university, whatever he decides he wants to do. He's still not sure. I don't even know what I want to be when I grow up, so I don't blame them. Like, who knows what they want to be when they grow up. Some people have a really clear idea in their brain what they want to be, but I wanted to be an actress. It didn't happen. I even took acting classes and everything for years, but still not an actress. All right, so that blends really well. Okay, so there's our purpley little flower. Now I'll put these back in their spots so I remember where they go. <laughs> and we've got a wonderful little soda here. So we're going to take this nice light gray and we're going to do the soda bubbles. Soda bubbles are clear. And it's got a piece of lemon in there and a sprig. So, not quite sure what kind of soda it is, but it might just be lemon soda water. 
and then we're going to take our red we're going to color in this dark areas of the straw here going to take our green and give it a sharpen because it's dull. And just give this a little bit of the darker green. Lighter green. Blend that in there. Could be lime leaves. And I think, yeah, I'm going to do this down here in that lime green. I'm going to make it a lime, because we already got yellow for the lemon. And then we need this darker green. I know I should be telling you what colors I'm using, but this one is seven. 39. I have a hard time reading them, so I'm going to have to learn them. And this one is that very, very dark green. Alright. Lime and ginger. Just going to blend that in. All right. Now we're going to take this creamy color because even though ginger ale is kind of a, a clear. soda. It still has a bit of a creamy color. So I'm going to take this creamy color. And I'm just going to very, very lightly color in the soda. And we'll make it a lime and ginger. I think I'm going to have one after this video. I like lime and ginger. It's good. Very refreshing. All right. So there's our lime and ginger. Now we're going to take this very light blue and we're going to sharpen it up so that we can do the glass. I'm just going to go around the edges of the glass here. Those little areas where the shadows are going to be. And I'm not going all the way into the glass, I'm just going in a little bit. I am filling in all the way in the back. A little bit heavier than I am through the rest of the glass. Now 
down here. We're going to just fill that whole thing in. And then we're going to get a deeper. There we go. Sorry about that. I had to quickly mute you before I sneezed. I didn't sneeze, but it felt like I was going to. So we're just going to take this little bit brighter blue and we're just going to do a couple, a little bit of shadow here. we've got shadow coming down from that umbrella and from the straw. Okay, there's our soda glass. Now we're just going to blend that all together with this really, really, really light gray. There we have it. Now for our grapes, we've got grape colors. So I'm just going to go around the edges with this dark purple here. I think I'm going to grab this one here as well. And do the insides. So let's do those first. Because it is a little bit of a lighter purple than the dark purple. Not a whole lot, but it's a bit of a medium purple. I probably should have um, sharpened it, but yeah. Okay. So now I'm going to take this darker purple and I'm just going to color in those shadowy darker areas. Now because I need to go over this again. I may sharpen that pencil just so I can get it. Or I might just use the light, lighter purple to give it that little bit of light source. So let's test that theory. Yeah, we're going to use this lighter one. to blend it all together. These pencils are so nice. They just flow right across the paper, which is really, really good. I know I'm I'm being quite slow and I'm not trying to. I'm really not, but 
I don't want to rush either because then I will uh, not enjoy the pencil. So, and I want to enjoy these pencils. So I'm sharpening the uh, 571 because I'm going to make this into a peach. And I'm going through and because the shadowy areas on the, the peach are quite a few more than the whiter, the lighter areas. I'm going to put down the darker color first and then I'm going to put down the, the lighter color just to blend it all together. So this one here is 872 and I'm going right over top of that darker color and just bringing it all together. And hopefully not erasing the darker color. And then we've got some greens. Got some leaves going on here. And here. And here. And then we'll take this darker one here. Probably should have sharpened it just to get into these really tiny tight points. Not a big deal. Alright, now we're going to take this dark blue and we're going to do the blueberries. I'm just trying to decide what color to do um, this bowl. So I'm just going around the edges. I'll come back through with a little bit lighter of a blue for the areas that are facing the light source. So I'll come back in with this one. Get those blueberries all cover colored up. Nice and blue. I know blueberries have a bit of purple in them too, but these ones are so small I really don't have enough room. I don't have enough surface space for the uh, purpley color. However, I am going to go back in with a bit of the darker blue just to darken it up a bit. There we go. And then we've got our lime here, so we're going to do this one, the lime, because it's already in there, so color the whole thing in this lime green. And then we're going to come back with the darker green. We 
Gonna do the little segments. And a little bit of a darker on the rind. one and blend it all together. And there we have that. Now what color to do the bowl? Um, we don't have a lot of red in there so let's do the bowl red. Once again, just gently, very, very lightly layering that color up. Now I don't want to put too much in around the shadowy areas because I am going to fill that with a darker color. But I want to get a good level of base coat down. of the lighter color so just putting a couple of layers down and then I'll go over it to blend the darker color in with okay so now we're going to take this one I think where's my chart yeah so I'm going to take the 585. I'll give it a sharpen. And hopefully don't break it. And we're just going to go into those deeper corners. those shadows. Doesn't that blend so nicely though? Just so pretty. Now I'm going to take a red orange and I'm just going to fill in those light areas a little bit with the red orange. Then I'm going to come back with the red. And this is scarlet. And just the reason why I use the orange is it gives it that little tiny touch of yellow um, for the light source. Gonna blend that darker color into the red. And there we have that. Now we've got little bubbles over here as well. We're just gonna color them this light blue color. And then we've got some leaves up here. There we go. And then we're going to 
take our darker green. And then we're going to take our lighter green. And then we're going to do our watch back up. How that happened, I don't know. Uh, we're going to take our orangish color. And then we're going to take our deep yellow. And then we're going to take this one. We're just going to go around the edge. Of that. I don't think there was enough shadow in there. All right, and there is our pretty little picture. Now I'm going to grab the blender and give it a sharpen. And we'll blend a few things. Look at that. That is just awesome. It just flattens it right out, brightens it right up. Awesome. Now, of course, I'm doing this very, very quickly, so I'm not getting it everywhere, but... One thing I like about the Caran d'Ache blender is how it just brightens that color. Just makes it pop. Smooths it right out and just makes it pop right up. Which is wonderful. Once again, I'm just doing this really quickly, so... And I really didn't need to do it in this area because it was already blended with that other pencil, so... There is our adorable little summer scene bowl of fruit, wonderful drink. And of course, the background will be done in a lovely blue. Okay, so I'll switch on over to the other camera here so that you can see how pretty it is with the other one that I did earlier. So this one here is the Ohuhu uh, pastel colors and this one here is the Caran d'Ache Illuminance. Lovely, lovely Lumis. Absolutely beautiful pencils. And I want to say thank you once again to the 
wonderful woman that sent them to me. Um, I am just humbled. I am so humbled by it. And just in love with these. <laughs> They're absolutely beautiful. Look at these. Are they not the prettiest pencils? I love all pencils, mind you. I think all pencils are pretty, so these ones are just as pretty as all the rest. I don't want them to feel bad. <laughs> One of my, my new favorites, absolutely, and I will start using them a lot more, and I'm going to start collecting them one by one to fill, fill in the rest of the set, but I have a great start. All right, guys, I want to say thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope that I was able to answer or show you some abilities of these wonderful pencils. They are very new to me, so I am still still learning them myself. So I hope I have done them a little bit of justice in the picture I have colored. Of course, remember to relax, color, and stay safe, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned. We still have a couple more videos to go this wonderful Fun Stuff Friday. Until the next video, bye-bye for now.